According to experts, the Kenyan government seems to be ignoring reality and can now be compared to a hawker who earns less than a dollar a day and is trying to drive a luxurious four-wheel drive fuel guzzler. It would cost the taxpayer at least 36 billion shillings to set up a devolved system of government which includes the upper and lower house as well as the county assemblies. And that does not include the cost of hiring staff, paying salaries for members of parliament, senators, county representatives are the massive infrastructure required around the country. With the increase in the number of uh, offices and uh, you know, administrators, then obviously the cost of running the government is going to be quite expensive. And uh, it will be interesting to see whether that would result in maybe increase in taxation. A report by the Parliamentary Budget Office indicates that it would cost 21.75 billion shillings in a year to run the 47 counties, including a total of 1,450 wards spread across the country. While it would cost 6.6 .6 billion shillings per year to run the current 222-member parliament, this figure is expected to more than double to 14.3 billion when a senator's chamber, which is to be made up of 68 members, is constituted. The public will still be financing the counties, but they'll be in charge of their own budgets, uh, you know, in terms of the money that is allocated to them. Experts from Deloitte Kenya warn that while Kenya is going into a transition from centralized to a devolved system of government, the infrastructure needed to make this happen is currently absent. The county will need to generate, you know, additional revenue to support the operations, and that means there is likelihood that we are going to see a lot more uh, you know, uh, levies being imposed on the on the on the Mwanainchi for them to fund the operations of these uh, new, you know, administrative units. In addition, staff needed at both national and county government levels to enhance service delivery and optimize devolution structures is yet to be put in place. While the Constitution of Kenya provides for a shift from a centralized to devolved system of government, administrative boundaries for a number of county governments are yet to be determined. There is a lot of, uh, you know, lack of clarity in terms of uh, how we are going to restructure the role of the provincial administration. So we are not sure whether we are going to have two parallel systems running together, you know, because uh, we already have the provincial administration and we, we are going to have the county. Kenya's next 2012-2013 budget will have new public finance infrastructure with significant changes on how revenues are raised, budgets drawn and expenditure prioritized. It will also provide for who controls which finances between national and county governments. While the economy is expected to grow at 4.7% in this financial year, rising modestly to 5.1% in 2012-2013 and 5.5% in 2013-2014, it will remain to be seen how such huge expenditure burden will be financed. Experts warn that this marginal economic growth can only be achieved if there is a smooth transition from the centralized governance structures to the devolved one. For News at 8, I'm Chef Oluchiri.